Well, obviously, I'm starting with this picture frame, just a cheapish one I bought from a local DIY shop. I have already taken it apart and I have cleaned the glass. Nothing special, just used a bit of washing up liquid on it. That, it's got a degreaser in it, most washing up liquids have. It takes off the smudges and the smears. And over here, I have the design which I intend to put on. Now obviously the first thing I want to do is get that design quite central. A printer has managed to just crop off the top of the design ever so slightly, but I think I will be able to cope with that. That looks about right. So now I need a bit of blue tack Obviously I don't want the blue tack to get in the way of the design. And so make make sure you are totally happy with it before you start. You're not going to be able to move it once you have begun. Right, this is a very complicated design. Well, it's repetitive, but at the same time complicated. Just take it a bit at a time. I'm obviously going to work way, way around the edge, turning it round as I go. As always with outlining, if you do make any mistakes, leave it. Let it dry and then we'll be able to cut it out and go back and touch it up again. If you try rubbing it out while it's still wet, you'll make an awful mess. Now, as normal, I'm going to be using a piping bag. And if you haven't used one of these before, I do find it the best way to do the outlining as I get most control. So there's my piping bag. Just... I know this bottle's coming to an end. Hopefully I'll get enough out. There we go, that should do for at least one piping bag. Take it down. In with the edges and roll it down. Now I've got a, a spare sheet of acetate here and I'll just put it at the side. As long as you don't put your hand in it later, it's good to just be able to give a try with the outline. And I haven't cut anything off there and it's not coming out. So I should get my scissors and just cut a little bit off the end and we'll see if that's enough. I can always cut a bit more off but you can't stick any back in. I think that's going to do for now. Right, it's just a matter of diving in and starting. Same technique, lift Let it lie down, always pulling the outliner, never pushing. You'll be happy to know, I'm not going to make you watch every little bit of this outlining because it is going to take me quite a while. So we'll do a bit with it, speed it up. And then I'll jump to the end. But I will repeat, I am not going to wipe off any mistakes. I'm going to leave them, let them dry, cut them out, and then go back with the outliner again and touch it up. It's worth getting your outlining correct. If your outlining's right,
then the painting is literally fill in the gaps. If your outlining's wrong, it won't matter how well you paint it, because it's still going to look wrong. So, hopefully that's it finished. Quick final check around, make sure I haven't missed any cat completely. I think I'm happy with most of it. Uh, I will double check when it's dry. There might be a couple of odd little tabs I want to cut out, but I don't think there's anything which needs replacing. Anyway, I shall leave that well alone now. Go away and do something else and give it a few hours to dry. So that's all finished and dried now. Um, I did give it a little bit of help with a hair dryer just to help it along. I don't think there's anything I completely want to cut out on here but there are just a couple of little extra bits like there which I would like to take off. Tell that isn't totally dry. Another little bit there. And that one I can just push back in. There we go. Keep on checking. As it's not totally, totally dry, I can just push those back in and make the line. and that should be fine right the next stage is to I'm going to add some adhesive lead to this six mil down these sides a three mil top and bottom and on the inside you don't have to do it like that this you could put a pipe line around the outside and then the inside but I'm going to do it like this and I'm going to do something slightly special just because of these clip bits so let me show you with a piece of 3mm I want that there so I can tell where the clip is going to go which is there find my 3 mil lead now this is doubled but I can cut off one strip about the right length because I can use one on this side and one on that side for this side, just stick it along the edge, just making sure I get it right on the edge. You see now why I left that gap. straight as possible see I've messed up my outlining there slightly I may need to go back and redo that bit I'll see how it looks when we finished now I'm going to take a bit Tape. 
just a small bit of tape and I'm going to put it under the lead neater in a minute. Just finish taking that off, put that bit away. Now by putting that bit of tape under just clean that off as well. I'm putting that bit of tape under, I've made sure it won't stick down there and that will give me an opportunity to get the tab underneath. And if you're not sure what I mean by that, that's that little bit there will be going under the lead. Right, I'm going to carry on and do all four edges doing that tab each time. Now on the sides I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing but this time using the 6mm lead and again I'm going to make sure in the right place there's a, a non-stuck bit to take the clip. Right, that's all the main leading up done. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is use this, which is called a boning tool. It's just a bit of hard plastic, and any bit of hard plastic will do, but this is well shaped, and I'm just going to use it to make sure everything is stuck down well. I don't want any paint seeping under. This lead. bit concerned it might seep out in the four places I've got which aren't stuck down um, but we'll worry about that in a bit. Right now as you may or may not have noticed whilst I, I'm sure you did, uh, whilst I was doing that I managed to mess up at least two, I thought there were three little bits We'll check it carefully. Yes, there's one there as well. And I'm just going to lift those off. There's one. And the other two around the other side. And cut those out. Three. I don't think there are any more. Have a careful check around. No, I think that's it. So I'll now get some lead and just touch those bits up.
and that's three. I think that's all there is. So now I shall leave that to dry completely before we do the next bit, which will be the painting. Well, now it's time to move on to the painting. I've chosen my colours. I'm going to do it red and gold, uh, two colours which I think go together nicely. Um, the knot, all the knot, is going to be transparent red, and then the background is going to be done in a semi-transparent, sorry, a semi-opaque paint called Fantasy Moon. That's the gold. I have just noticed there's a bit here I haven't done. I've cut it out, but I haven't repaired it. So what I'm going to do is repair that now, then I'm going to swizz the piece around and start painting on that side. So I've repaired that last piece, but it's over there and I'll leave it to dry. In the meantime, I will start down here. Now I'm going to follow one thread at a time and that will give one piece time to dry before I paint a pore, at least semi-dry, before I paint a bit next to it. It's always best to do if you can. I'm using the normal flood fill technique, put the paint in, I've made sure my table is flat, down to spirit level flat, and I'll just flood fill each of these segments. Now again, I'm not going to make you watch every little bit of this. Just to repeat that I'm flood filling, I'm dropping the paint on, then pushing it to make sure it gets up to the lines. I'm not actually really brushing anything. I am using a solid paintbrush, but you can you can use one with bristles as well. It's not a problem, but again, just use it to push the paint around. Don't think about brushing on the glass with it. Right, we will speed this up and then jump to closer to the end. Well, well, I've done all the red and made a good start on the gold for the background now. You can see I've lifted the uh, piece up, I've actually put it on some paint pots. By giving a gap between it and the white paper below, it helps, helps me see much clearer on these little fiddly bits of where it's been covered and where it hasn't. I think if I was doing that, this design again, I would move these edges in so I've got a nice distinct line of gold round it rather like how I've got on these three edges um, this is turning out to be a little more fiddly than I thought but anyway we shall plough on you might notice I've changed to an even smaller brush it is a solid one again and I shall just carry on doing these teeny little bits and it is a matter of just teasing the paint around so you fill in all the gaps I 
and won't make you watch all this yet again. What I shall do is let you see a little bit speeded up and we shall skip to the end of the painting. Okay, we're on the last stretch now. Um, as you can see, I've got the frame back on top of paint pots to give a gap. It's just because I don't want it lying. Um, this is the back, and I don't want it lying on the work I've done. What I've done is cut some pieces of silver card, and they're going to go onto the back, and that should give a nice reflective finish on the other side. Once I've put all four pieces of those on that should be the frame finished. I mean, to put them on I'm using just very small bits of a double sided film. So I should put the film on here Then I need to take the protective backing off. Might cut this bit because it takes me quite a while sometimes. And there we go. I should do that round all the edges and that should be our frame complete. And here is the finished frame. If I'd doing it again I think I'd be tempted to make a couple of changes. As I said earlier I'd move the knots away and make sure there's a nice border around them so there's a run of the gold. And I'd also be tempted to try it in a lighter colour. The second image is a close-up of the hook on the side and as you can see it does go, the tab does go under the lead. It produces a slight raise in the lead but that's hardly noticeable from the front. Okay well I hope you've enjoyed this project. It's a method of doing it, you can use your own design but I will make sure this one I've used is downloadable from the website. Happy crafting. <laughs>